Hey friends, welcome back to the Samurai version 3 tutorial. And today we are finishing the shaping uh, in terms of structure. So we're gonna complete the chest folds. Um, we're gonna do the face, we're gonna do the hat, and then I'll show how to do the neck a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be an action-packed tutorial, uh, lots to do. And after that, we're gonna be in a great spot for the last shaping tutorial, which will be all about how to pose it, how to finish the shaping um, and all that kind of stuff. But let's jump into it. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do, I guess, is we're gonna go bottom up. So we're gonna start with the chest plate and kind of the belt area. And what I like to do is, uh, we already have these layers kind of spread out. Um, so you know, those are little flippers and stuff, but we're actually going to shape up this bottom unit here and that'll, help us give the illusion it's a dress. So all we're gonna do is do a reverse fold like this, not all the way to the edge, but about halfway. So it's kind of like a 22.5 angle here on both sides like this. And that's going to give it just a little bit of shape. Um, and it's gonna make the rest of it look a little bit more natural. Um, we're also going to do that on the layer right below it as well. Just a small little reverse fold here and then a little bit reverse fold here. That way um, it's not just like a rectangular block. And even though it's a small detail, it's gonna go quite a ways. Um, and it's just, yeah, just, just, just a very small detail that helps add to the look of the samurai. Like that. Oops. Cool. That way when the other layers are spread out, we kind of get um, a similar texture of it following through. And yeah, just, just a small detail. Um, next thing we're gonna do is the chest plate area and as you can see this this whole time our chest plates have been kind of barely there um, so what I advise here is if you have clips at home like uh, maybe like these I would go ahead and just clip this back unit in place while we work so just like that uh, if you don't have these, no worries. I'm going to show it without these in case you don't have those. But if you have them, they're a nice tool. Highly recommend you just clip it in place for now. Uh, but if not, you're just going to want to pinch these units really well. Like this, so that the creases um, really want to stay in place. Um, and then that way we can... I, get our pleats back and we're just gonna go one at a time. So I'm just gonna focus on the bottom ones right here. So I'll just isolate those for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold half this unit um, vertically. So we're just gonna mountain fold it behind like, like this. And as you can see on our top pleat, we're not going all the way through. So it's going to make a swivel fold and that's going to help us lock this pleat down. So let me kind of show you what I mean. I'm gonna do this slowly and I'll show it. So I'm gonna start this mountain fold here. We're gonna continue. And then right when we get to the top pleat, we don't fold that down, but I'm gonna go flip it on this side and you can see it swivel folds behind forming a little lock like this. So show that really quick. And then we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. So make sure your pleat's in place. And you're going to mountain fold about halfway, all the way up. And then we'll flip it over again so you can see the swivel fold. There you go, 
really make sure that swivel fold creases down so that it locks in place. Not your creases. And that helps lock down those chest pleats. Now, obviously you can see they're still kind of, they still want to come out, uh, but that's okay. When we get into our final touches, we're going to help ensure that um, they stay in place. But otherwise for now, try to get them to lay flat and then you can kind of press down and curl, um, like kind of what we did with the legs, but curl close to the middle of the model to help that stay in place. And what I like to do is you just kind of massage the paper um, and just get it to obey you a little bit as uh, the creases settle in. It's kind of like that. Um, and as you can see, while our mountain fold wasn't entirely perfect, it kind of makes um, a little curve. And that's actually good for us because that kind of helps with the body shape. Um, and we're gonna add to that later on. Uh, the last thing I like to do is I just like to round out the corners a little bit. So not all the way in half, but just a little bit. I just like to mountain fold the corners of the chest armor like this. And same thing on the other side. And that just helps it look a little bit more like a chest plate and less rectangular. Um, yeah, that's that. And if these plates ever come out, just really try to enforce that lock in the back and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Cool. All right, so now onto the next part. So um, you can either do the face next or the neck next, depending on what you prefer. But I think I'm gonna do the face first. Um, can't quite remember <laughs> which one's easier, honestly. Um, but before we do that, uh, now I know this is going to look like I'm doing the neck part, uh, but it's not. I'm actually just going to um, lift up the face flap like this and not all the layers, but the layers connected to the inside layer of the face. I'm going to do kind of a reverse fold and it's not a perfect reverse fold, but we're just going to thin out the underside. And let me show that to you of the face, kind of like this. Try to get both layers like that. And do the same thing on the other side. Like this. And that's just gonna help us out a little bit for both thinning the neck and the face. That lie flat. Uh, but then now what we're going to do is you don't want to keep the face this big. This double block makes the head look way too big, makes the face look way too big. So we're going to slim down. Um, normally I like to go from the corner down to about halfway between this grid unit. Um, so kind of like this and I just do a simple mountain fold. And you can either fold all the way or you can keep it rounded. I prefer to not fold all the way. I just fold about, you know, 90 degrees halfway like this. Um, that way it looks a little bit more curved. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. And this part, you wanna try to make them even because otherwise your face is gonna look kind of lopsided and funny looking um, like that, right? And so you're just kind of trying to mimic the shape of a, like a human face um, roughly. So, you know, generally the, you can draw a face with a circle and then draw a line beneath it and, and connect it to. So you can kind of imagine that here. Um, and then the head is still too big. So I'm gonna take like a third of a grid unit and mountain fold like this between the Hold we just made. And then I'm going to use this as a lock. So I'm going to pinch the corners like that. And that's going to kind of lock in the shape of the face we made just a little bit. And then I'm going to valet fold these corners 
behind like that. And that gives us our face shape. And then that allows you to curl the face even more to slim it out just a little bit like this. Um, and normally I don't like these corners to be too pointy. So even more, I'll just dampen them a little bit. I'm not really gonna fold. I'm just gonna kind of press on them to make them less sharp. Just briefly. There you go. Again, you're not really wanting to fold super flat here. You're gonna wanna use the advantage of the paper's three-dimensional shaping um, to your advantage and if you hold the hat down like this, you can kind of visualize how big your head is and kind of reference it to the rest of the body. Um, obviously we haven't put in the neck yet, but yeah, and the face can always be rearranged a little bit more after you finish everything else. But generally you're gonna wanna aim for about that size um, or whatever looks proportional to you. Um, I see more mistakes making the face too big than small, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but now let's move on to the neck. There's a few ways to do the neck, and normally here I would recommend you use methyl cellulose to strengthen the um, paper so that all these layers don't spread too far apart like that. Um, that just makes it a little bit easier, ultimately in the final touches. That's what I'm going to do um, to keep it in place. But again, if you're not using glue or if you're a purist or you don't like MC or what, whatever your reason is, um, all you have to do is just grab all these layers together very carefully, try to get them even. And you're going to make valley folds inwards. So it's gonna kind of be like a V inwards as close as you can to the middle. So V like this. So again, I'm just trying to valley fold on the bottom and the top at the same time, or one at a time, but kind of at the same time so we don't actually squish anything. And that's going to lower the head a little bit as well as thin out the neck. And be careful not to fold over your chest plate so you don't mess any of the folds up. Um, but once you do this, it's going to help the body kind of curve in like that, as well as help shorten up the neck a little bit. And this part, it's much, it's very close to like a squish fold, but still try not to squish the entire thing or you might fold through some layers you didn't want to. Um, you don't want to mess up your chest plate, especially if you did a really clean job on that. So let me try to show that. <laughs> I'm not sure if I went out of frame. I apologize if I did. Um, and once the neck is kind of like this, that's that's basically, probably as thin as you're gonna be able to get it um, just with folding. Uh, if you can get it thinner, then that's good. Um, just make sure you keep proportion with everything else. And it's gonna wanna push the, see how I undid my pleats here? Um, just make sure to correct those after you're done with the neck. Um, but the face is also sticking up. So you, once that's done, you just wanna make sure it's in place for your final shaping. Um, and that can be done by just adjusting the hat as all those layers are connected. Um, we're going to fix our chest plate locks like that. And bring it together, press these units in the back just to get everything all situated. Um, that's pretty much how you do the neck. Now again, if you are like a purist or whatever um, and you don't want to use MC, you can just tie a string around this neck really tightly so it holds in place. And if you have treated paper um, or any kind of paper that like holds together, so if you're using foil, this will be really easy. But if you're using paper like this, um, that takes a little bit longer to mold into place. If you leave that there for like a week, then the paper will kind of stay. Um, and you won't have to do any, you know, excess chemicals or strengtheners or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, giving an option for the purists out there. Um, and also, you know, this model doesn't 100% require any glue for shaping or wet shaping or anything if you guys aren't down for that. Um, but there you go, that's pretty much it for the neck. And let's do the hat really quickly. 
All right, so we're on to the hat. Now the goal of the hat, um, or at least in this style, it was meant to look like a rice hat. Um, so if you haven't seen an Asian farming rice hat, then feel free to Google that. Um, they're pretty common. Um, but our goal is to make the square as round as possible. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is round up the corners. And this is happens by just doing a rabbit ear um, to break out the corner um, into two edges. So as you can see, I'm just doing a little rabbit ear, Not, nothing fancy, nothing special, um, but it makes the corner like that. And you're gonna do that on all four corners here. Speed this up really quick. All right, so now we've rounded out the hat. Um, and if you're using a smaller paper, this might be a little bit more difficult, but I've done it on 30 centimeters. So uh, you guys can do it. Um, you just gotta have a lot of patience. Um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna want to make mountain folds on the diagonals here like this. And that's going to lock those rabbit ears we just made in place. So just like that. And it's gonna be a little hard to crease to the middle, but again, just be careful. Um, but these mountain folds are going to help make the paper kind of curl down into the hat shape, which is our goal. So just make sure the corners are tight. Like that, and um, basically you're going to repeat this um, into divisions of eight, or I guess, yeah, I, th I think it's eight, but you're gonna do the diagonals, you're gonna do the middles, and then you're going to divide it once more here, here, and all the way across. Um, and sometimes that's not going to stay, so the other thing I do if it's not staying is I create little valley folds um, right next to the mountains um, so that the creases are more apparent. It's like that. I just use my thumbs, um, push the mountains a certain way. I do that for all sides like this. Um, so it's this is kind of just a crease texture. Um, it's not really a three-dimensional structure. However, once you have all the creases in, it will start to become a 3D structure. Um, but take your time on this. I rarely see people do this step, um, especially however many times all the way around the circle. But trust me, it doing the whole thing makes a great texture, great detail. Um, so I highly recommend you try that. Um, and I'm just going to time lapse through and show what it looks like at the end. All right, so as you can see, um, this is kind of the texture and the shape we're going for. Um, makes that nice 3D plane and whenever there's light, get some cool shadows off of it. Uh, makes it look just a little bit more detailed. So now when we look at our samurai from the front, um, if we put everything into place you can see that the hat should sit kind of above the face, kind of like this. Give a little view, and this is kind of what you want. So, if you want to hold the model in place here, that's kind of the pose you're going to want to go for. However, if you want to make him look sideways, then you just adjust the neck. Uh, you adjust the neck accordingly, um, and whatnot. But that is the construction for all the various shapes uh, for this model. Um, all we have left to do is just that final posing and shaping, um, and we're going to lock these guys down. Um, make them all nice, make them look in the action pose or just very grand. Um, and that is it. But in terms of folding and structures, this is completed. Um, so great job so for, for making it through this far. We're almost there. So stay tuned for the next tutorial. Um, and thanks so much for watching.
origami All this origami All this origami Got me going kamikaze Now I'm